Well, hi, everybody. Um, thanks for joining us today for this webinar that we're calling 10 Things to Know About UHS, which is your on-campus medical and health clinic and wellness resource. My name is Emma Abed. I am going to be a second year master's student in the School of Public Health and the School of Social Work. And I'm also an intern at UHS's Wolverine Wellness, which we'll talk a little bit about in this presentation. And my name is Dania Harris, and I am also going to be a second year student in the School of Public Health. Um, and I'm also an intern at Wolverine Wellness. Fun fact, Emma and I both did our undergrad at the University of Michigan, so we know firsthand what it's like to use UHS and figure out all the resources you learn during orientation. Also, congrats on being a Wolverine. We're so glad you're here. So before we get started, we wanted to encourage you to submit questions during our webinar today. Feel free to drop them in the Q&A and we will try our best to answer them in real time. Even if you don't have questions right now, we'll leave our contact information at the end so you can always reach out with any questions that come up afterward. And so going on to the first thing to know about UHS is that all U of M students can use UHS. The University Health Service is available to the entire U of M community. All students of all levels, in addition to faculty and staff, are welcome to receive care from UHS. Finding your way around campus might take a while, but we wanted, to, we wanted you to know that UHS is located on central campus near two major bus stops, so it is conveniently located and easy to access. We're across from the Michigan Lead and next to the Power Center. The second thing to know about UHS is that appointments are required for clinic visits. As we welcome a return to an in-person campus this fall, there are COVID precautions in place to keep our community safe. One of these safety measures is limiting walk-ins to UHS. That said, we want to see you and connect with you. So in order to receive care at UHS, you have to make an appointment. And there are different ways to do this. The easiest way is to make an appointment is to call UHS directly. You can call UHS at 734-764-8320 as listed on the slide. Another option is to use the patient portal. This is an online tool that allows you to virtually connect to UHS. And we'll talk more about that later. And a final option is to email UHS, which is also listed on the screen. Once your email is received, a schedule and more information on what to do at your appointment can be found at the link, what to expect when visiting UHS. The third thing, thing to know about UHS is that UHS offers comprehensive health services. UHS offers a variety of services that promote holistic well-being. They can be considered a one-stop shop for health services. You can receive services for primary care and regular checkup appointments, sexual health, mental health, nutrition, physical therapy, and so much more. I have personally used UHS for a variety of reasons throughout my undergraduate career, and it is such a great resource on campus. During my freshman year, I got pink eye for the first time, and I was able to get an appointment almost immediately. My physician was so nice and helpful, and I received the medicine I needed the very same day from the UHS pharmacy. Continuity of care is important. And by researching online and reading the biographies of physicians at UHS, you can find a provider that will be a good fit for you and establish a medical home on campus. However, if you are experiencing a medical emergency that cannot wait, it is best to call 911 or go to the emergency department at Michigan Medicine. Before we move on to the next slide, you can see UHS provides comprehensive care for many of your health needs. So if you are currently under medical care with a doctor at home, for example, for a, chron a chronic health concern or in mental health services, you can get that care here on campus. There's also a pharmacy in UHS, so you can easily transfer and or pick up your prescriptions in UHS using the link on the website. Um, to go on to holistic wellness, the services offered by UHS are meant to foster comprehensive holistic wellness. This means to not only be healthy physically, but in other areas as well, such as emotionally, socially, environmentally, spiritually, intellectually, occupationally, and financially. You can reflect on questions such as, what behaviors do you practice that promote health and safety, such as eating and sleeping enough for your physical health? Or what makes you feel comfortable and safe in your community for your environmental health? Or what kind of support, interaction, and connection do you need for your social health? These areas make up the model of well being, and this is used widely across campus. You can even find a mural of it in the union. And UHS offers different resources to help you achieve this holistic wellness. The fourth thing to know about UHS is that telehealth services are available. The COVID 19 pandemic has allowed UHS to ramp up its telehealth services for added safety and convenience. 
If you cannot come into UHS, you can still receive care in other ways. Video appointments are available so you can talk to a doctor or nurse virtually. And you can also contact the healthcare provider through the patient portal. There is a messaging feature that allows you to chat with a physician. There is also a 24 seven nurse line that you can always call to receive medical advice. Calling a nurse as well as the video appointments and the patient portal messaging are all free and receiving advice over the phone could save you a medical visit to UHS, the emergency room or another care facility. The fifth thing to know about UHS is that you can save money by using UHS. UHS is available to U of M students at little to no cost. Most of the services are covered by the health service fee that is included in your tuition. So you are encouraged to use UHS for your health and well-being. It is beneficial in a multitude of ways to use UHS, especially because it is something that you have already paid for and invested in. This, the fee covers many services at UHS, such as most clinic visits, including specialists, nurse advice by phone, day or night, wellness coaching, and initial evaluation for physical therapy. However, the health service fee does not apply to services outside of UHS, including Michigan Medicine. All right, number six is that students have no out-of-pocket out of costs for many services, including COVID testing and vaccination, as well as flu shots, meaning these are all completely free to you. The COVID vaccine is gonna be necessary for anyone who is living on campus and students who have in-person classes are going to need to undergo weekly COVID testing unless they do have that vaccine. You can use the self-report vaccine form, which is linked on the slide here, um, to let the university know that what your um, vaccination status is. And if you have received the vaccine, that's how the university will know that you don't have to do that weekly testing. Um, the flu shot's also available at UHS in the fall, and it's definitely really encouraged. I actually skipped it my first year as an undergrad, and I got the flu, and it was brutal, and I've gotten the flu shot every year since then. It's super easy, and I definitely recommend that. Um, and then as Dania said, some of the other services that are free to students include the clinic visits and nurse advice over the phone. There's actually a full list of costs for students on UHS's website, which is linked here um, and will also be on Canvas later as well. Number seven is that UHS is not Michigan Medicine. Um, you might have already heard of Michigan Medicine. U of M is really proud that it is such a highly regarded institution. And while UHS coordinates with Michigan Medicine, we are actually separate. So know that when we're talking about these services in this presentation, we are referring to UHS and not to Michigan Medicine. UHS is gonna be on one building um, right on campus in central campus versus Michigan Medicine, which is pictured on the slide, is this sprawling campus made up of lots of different hospitals and clinics. Um, at Michigan Medicine, your student health service fees do not apply. So Michigan Medicine accepts insurance or cash for payment. Um, number eight, UHS may bill your personal health insurance. So this is a great time to talk about medical insurance. While many things are covered at UHS, some services may cost money. These services are either gonna be billed to an insurance company or you'll be responsible to pay for the services, which can be costly. So now's a really good time to talk to your family members and ask whether or not you have insurance. If you're an out of state student, you also wanna to check to see if your insurance has coverage in the state of Michigan. You can usually find the customer service number on the back of your insurance card. Um, and that actually reminds me, be sure to have a copy of your insurance card and prescription card when you come to campus. Most students usually just take a picture of them. That way you just have them on your phone. It's a little easier. Um, for any students with insurance, take some time to talk to your family members and learn what your policy actually covers. For example, some insurance companies have deductibles, co-pays, and other out-of-pocket expenses as well. Um, having health insurance is definitely recommended, but if you don't have insurance, we're happy to help you explore what, that, what options are available to you as a student at the University of Michigan. Um, we have something called the Managed Care Office at UHS, which is ready to help you with your insurance questions and needs. Um, and as a reminder, like we talked about a few slides ago, we're linking you to a site on UHS's website that walks you through what exactly your costs are as a student for more details. Number nine is that UHS has great online tools, um, including the patient portal and the well-being site, which are both linked here. The patient portal is gonna be the center for all things UHS. So I use it to schedule my appointments and to see my test results. You can also use it to message your healthcare providers, so your doctors, um, to see if you, know, if you have any questions, they can answer it through the patient portal. 
Um, it's super easy to use and we would definitely recommend getting registered right now before you need it so that it's a lot easier to schedule something um, when you do need it when you're on campus. And then the wellbeing site is another awesome resource. This is where the folks at Wolverine Wellness have actually put together a ton of resources for your over overall wellbeing. Um, so whether you're having trouble with uh, stress or finances, alcohol use, sleep or something else, there's resources there to help. Um, all the wellness related events are going to be collected on that website as well. And they even have short meditations and music and cute animal videos if you need to take a break. All right, and that brings us to number 10, which is how to upload your immunization records. If you've ever played in sports or gone on like an overnight field trip, you know that sometimes you have to communicate your vaccination history for everyone's safety. Um, so the same is true for living on campus at U of M. Uploading your immunization records is really, really easy, and it's a great way to practice um, the patient portal just to get used to it. Many of us aren't really familiar with handling our own medical records, um, and this is a great way to practice your autonomy in that area. Um, and just so you know, if you are living on campus um, in the fall, you will be required to be fully vaccinated for COVID-19 unless you have a documented um, exemption. Uh, just be, be watching your emails um, in the next few weeks and months um, for more specific information on this. And I know we've mentioned Wolverine Wellness a couple of different times now during this presentation. Before we wrap up, we just wanna tell you a little bit more about what Wolverine Wellness does. Wolverine Wellness is a part of UHS. Um, we're dedicated to social, social justice and promoting individual and community well-being on campus. We know that everybody manages their, their well-being differently. And we love to support students as they learn about incorporating well-being as part of the U of M experience. As a college student, you're going to be navigating lots of ups and downs, making big decisions and finding ways to belong. And so this is especially true as a new student on campus. And Wolverine Wellness um, offers individual and group opportunities to explore your personal and academic success through a variety of ways. We've listed some of them here. So these include wellness coaching, the collegiate recovery program, special events, and there's even a two credit course called Living Well in College and Beyond, which I took when I was um, an undergrad student here. We're a great starting point if you have questions about college or just life circumstances in general, um, and whatever it may be, don't be afraid to ask for help. Uh, Wolverine Wellness also hires undergraduates. So um, if you, like we do, check us out. Um, and finally, we wanna just invite you to visit our office in the basement of UHS. There's free um, safer sex supplies or other freebies, and you can just keep an eye out for us in the next year doing presentations for student orgs and other like learning communities. We also have Hawkeye, the wellness dog, and he's going to be there weekly. So maybe we can connect with you there. All right, so thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, we know for, from experience that UHS is a great resource to use while you're here on campus and using this amazing resource can protect and influence your own academic success while you're here. We want you to know that UHS is here for you and your health needs and all of your questions. And we know you're getting bombarded with a lot of new information during orientation. So we recommend putting UHS's number in your phone right now. It's right there on the screen. And we've also put UHS's address and website here. And you can follow UHS on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for updates. So we hope that you keep in touch and go blue. All right. Um, so that basically is the end of what we had to say. We wanted to just also remind everybody that there's going to be another parent and family focused UHS webinar on Friday, June 25th at 1 p.m. Eastern time. And if anyone has any questions, feel free to put them in the Q&A. All right, so I think that Dania and I are going to go ahead and log off and then Janet will go ahead and address any last questions that you all have. Um, so thanks again so much for being here. Thank you, Emma and Dania. Um, hi, everybody. We just have a few more open questions that I thought I would um, answer directly. Um, so, um, we have lots of information on the website and I know that sometimes is a hard place to find everything, um, but we will be posting our links for you to see and this will be posted, this webinar will be posted, but we also ask, especially if you are family and parents of new students to join us on Friday at 1 p.m. 
And um, so there'll be more parent focused with lots more uh, detail. This was definitely student focused, just helping them understand how to use UHS. Um, but let me just go over the questions that are still alive. And at that point, um, we can um, say goodbye and go from there. Um, so um, somebody is asking about campus safety. And so um, if you um, want to send me privately your email, I can um, give you uh, the website. I don't have it off the top of my head um, where you can um, find all of those answers. Um, for campus safety and they usually do a presentation as well so check the seminar um, schedule to see if they are coming in. And we still have 37 people on um, and we don't have any more questions, um, so now would be your chance to ask some more if you wanted. Um, I'll give it a couple more minutes if we don't get any new ones, um, we can. Uh, say goodbye. We have someone asking about tips. Yep, we have lots of tips always. Um, and uh, especially if it's your very first student coming to campus, we can definitely uh, be thinking about ways to set up maybe a first aid kit um, and some of the supplies that they might need in their um, like to pack getting ready for campus living. Uh, immunization forms. Let me just, um, I actually have that link here for you. Um, give me a second while I switch over. Um, immunization forms. That's a good one. And then someone asked previously about prescriptions how to refill prescriptions and how to transfer, which I think are really important. Um, so I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna type. Here's some prescription information as well. Um, a lot of uh, people are wondering how to do that. It's actually easy with the app um, that the students can do. So if you have a student who has their um, prescription being filled at their home pharmacy, all you have to do is download the app and transfer it. Um, you can also call, uh, you need the prescription number and they, they can always just walk in. Um, but it's nice, what we always say is, and this is what um, they'll, they'll say on Friday, is that you want your student to come to campus with at least a month's prescription, maybe even more. Um, so talking to their primary care physician to find that information um, so that they don't run out. Um, that's the last thing that you wanna do is worry about refilling a prescription and not having a plan. All right, more questions are coming in. What don't you cover? Um, that's a good question. So we have, um, we do have specialty clinics. So if somebody has a, um, a condition that actually needs more specialized care, um, for instance, I think in the past, um, they've said something like maybe Crohn's disease where you need to have um, multiple uh, specialists working on one uh, particular student, then um, we might go to recommend you going to Michigan Medicine or um, still maintaining your work at home. If that is something that you are concerned about, um, I definitely want you to feel um, comfortable contacting UHS to find out exactly what kind of care we can provide your student. Um, but usually most things are taken care of at UHS. Um, and, but if there's a specific thing that you're curious about, we definitely want to chat with you before um, your student arrives on campus. So give us a call for that. Um, CVS Pharmacy, mm, there are uh, CVS, I, CVS and Walgreens are right on central campus. Um, so right on State Street. Uh, state in North U, I think. Um, insurance plan for an international student, definitely. Please call uh, the International Center. They're actually having a presentation on international insurance. Um, so uh, 
I don't have that information, but the International Center can definitely support you for that. All right, what don't you cover? Um, like I said, um, for a specialty, if there's something very specific that you're looking for, um, we can talk about what that might be, but um, most times students start at UHS and stay there unless it, it becomes um, apparent that we need to um, transfer a student to a specialist that's not on campus um, at the UHS. Any others? Here's a question that someone said, if someone, if something comes up, how quickly can a student be seen? Um, so that's, that's why the call is really important because not all students need to be seen. Um, and if a student needs to be seen, they will make, um, they'll make arrangements to get that student in as soon as possible. It all depends on how, um, how much the wait time is for that day. What we always say is, um, and you probably know this from remember when the kids were young and they would get sick on a Friday at three. Um, so if your student is starting to feel yucky, um, you kind of give them like, hey, check your fever. So uh, check your temperature. So one of the things that we always recommend is that your student um, have a thermometer and that they know how to use it. Um, so that they can tell if they have a fever or not. But we do recommend students calling um, the 24 seven nurse hotline um, and get help from a nurse to see when that student needs to be seen. So sometimes the nurse will say, well, it's, you know, it's 3.30, we really wanna get you in um, before the clinic closes. And then sometimes a student might call at 7 p.m. saying, this is how I feel. And the student will say, uh, the nurse will say, all right, give us a call tomorrow at um, 8, 8, you know, 9 a.m., 8 a.m., we open at 8, 8 a.m. and we can see how you're doing and get you in if needed. Um, and so um, just like a pediatrician, uh, you'd call in to see, have someone assess and kind of get you in. But um, it's common if a student needs to be seen same day, it's gonna happen. Um, so know that. Uh, the question is, can I assume if the same normal health needs such as a cold or headache, UTI, UHS is sufficient for the students, no additional health insurance is needed. That is true. Um, however, it depends on if a UTI, they wanted to do um, certain testing, some testing um, might not be covered. Um, and so insurance would be billed for that or out of pocket. And of course, if a student um, needs to have a prescription filled, that would be out of pocket or insurance as well. Um, so if you go to the website, it tells you very specifically um, the list of the things that are covered and aren't covered, but standard, um, Clinic visits are definitely part of the university health fee. Oh, so that kind of, I, someone just asked what um, types of visits might lead to additional fees and costs. Um, so that, for example, physical therapy, your first evaluation um, visit is free, but after, um, if you choose, if your student chooses to do uh, physical therapy, then they would have to pay out of pocket or bill their insurance um, after their initial evaluation. And uh, for some blood tests um, and other medical tests in radiology would also be um, in labs um, would have to be out of pocket or billed. But the student would be communicated with that um, as the process goes. I'm just going to
Yeah, the question is, if a student um, breaks an ankle or leg, um, can UHS handle it? Yes, we can. We have, um, we have x-ray um, radiation on radiology on um, in UHS and we have um, the physicians that can do that. Obviously, just like a normal break, you might have to see a specialist and they might refer out. Um, but we can definitely um, start the process and take care of them and then decide um, if further care needs to happen. How do parents get access to the student's medical record? If they are under um, 18, um, that uh, is something that happens automatically. In fact, this is a good example. Like if the student is under 18, when they come to campus, say they turn 18 in November, you as a parent should sign a consent for treatment form so that the student can be seen without having your permission. Um, that way, if the student wakes up with a sore throat or a fever, they can um, get in um, without having you present or not having to have the paperwork done. But um, as, uh, as adults at 18, their medical records are private to you. Um, however, if the student agrees, they can sign um, information over that you would see it. But um, legally, you cannot see um, someone's medical information after they are 18 years old. Just a reminder that UHS is not part of Michigan Medicine, um, two very, very different entities. UHS is, um, has about 180 employees and it's this building right in central campus. Um, and it's specifically helping um, students, faculty and staff and community members. Um, so it's really focused for the U of M community, whereas Michigan Medicine is a huge entity um, institution with multiple campuses and um, many, 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 many employees. Um, and so when we talk about the university health fee, we are talking about care that is received at UHS on campus. All right, it's 529, I have one question. I have an HMO Blue Care Network. Can I pick a doctor there as a primary care doc? Or are you able to build the HMO without picking a doctor there? You would have to, with the Blue Care Network, you would have to choose your doctor, a, a doctor as a primary care physician. Um, but yes, we do take um, Blue Care Network. It is better to sign release forms and mail in before arriving to school. Um, yes, so, um, if you have some, I think, Debbie, if I hear that, if I'm understanding this correctly, um, sending in your information, any information before school starts is really, really good um, because it just helps establish the con continuity of care for your student. So if your student is not 18 and you need to do a minor um, consent form, um, you can fax that or you can mail it. Um, there's no way to upload it. So definitely do that. Um, and other information that we're asking for is immunizations um, records. And you can upload those at any time, multiple times. So say right now you wanted to upload what you have of your students immunization records, you could do that right away. And then say they are trying to get their last minute meningitis or their second COVID, um, and you won't have that documentation until you know mid-July, then you can upload again. Because that's what's so amazing about the uh, patient portal is that you can access that information again and again and upload as many times as you want. So it's an ongoing process. Also just um, invite your student to do it with you so that they understand what's happening and how to do it. Um, because as uh, Dania and Emma said, it's really a great way for them to learn autonomy and figure out um, really just managing their own health care. Um, it's such an important thing um, and it's a life skill for sure. Priority health and spectrum health. Um, this is where I think those are both Michigan um, companies. Um, and so you would have to call on the back of your um, on the back of your card uh, the customer service number and just say, um, does 
can I find a provider in Ann Arbor? Can you help me find a provider at UHS um, and do it that way? Um, so you might have to do a little bit of legwork on your end, um, but we, we take most medical insurances in Michigan, um, but sometimes you just have to double check to um, see if um, there's a provider that you want specifically. UMich campus is physically close to U of M hospital, but they are separate entities. Um, UHS takes care of most students um, and we only use Michigan medicine for um, rare or serious conditions. Uh, sometimes we have students who already have established care at Michigan medicine and they would go to Michigan medicine, um, but still see their primary care physician or maybe their um, sexual health provider. Um, at UHS. So it all depends on um, some students already have care established at Michigan Medicine, so they would continue there. All right, it is 5.33. I'm going to say goodbye to everybody. Um, I'm trying to think um, if there is a way. I'm going to add my email just in case you need a way to reach somebody. Um, I'm not always the best person to reach out to, but I can certainly get you into the right direction of who could answer your question. Now, um, on the Q&A, so that if you have specific questions that you want to ask, um, you can send them my way and I'll connect you to the right resource. So I wanna thank everyone um, for showing up. If you liked, um, especially the q and it feels like there's a lot of parents on the call. I really do wanna um, encourage you to join us on Friday, June 25th at 1 p.m. Um, Dr. Amy Maslach and Dr. Lindsay Mortensen will be doing the presentation and they'll be doing a deeper dive than today's presentation. And uh, they are wonderful physicians. Um, who will give you a deeper look into how UHS works. Um, so uh, definitely tune in for that. Be on the lookout. This presentation and, and Friday's webinar will be posted as well. So even if you can't make the Friday webinar, um, you'll have a chance to see um, Dr. Maslach and Dr. Mortensen uh, tell you a little bit more about H, uh, UHS. So thank you for your time and um, I um, take care and I hope our paths cross someday. Take care, bye-bye.